You're shooting the omen? Did you bring the omen? Yes, sir. Something's messed up with your bow. You shoot a bear shaft at 20. Mm -hmm. At full draw, it's very deep in my hand. Now, what I like about being on the middle finger. <laughs> For us, coming from the target world, it starts with torque tune. I do have the integrate. I've never ran it. It's nice to have like some fresh blood, mm -hmm. but somebody who actually competes. Absolutely. And owns an archery company. For us, coming from the target world, it starts with torque tune. And that takes that option completely away. The Picatinny rail mounts on the front of the riser takes that away. You know, the bridge lock system, at least on a Matthews, yet, you know, that leaves the sight more adjustable. But for me, first step, particularly, you know, it comes from the target world so much, but torque tuning to me is more important to a bow hunter. You're a fixed blade guy. Yeah. You're never in a perfect shooting position. Never. Never. If the bow's not torque tuned and you're taking a funky, wonky shot, first thing that bowhead's doing is trying to get the arrow off, off plane. I got snacks. I got a meat stick from Fatty, Pink Thin. Thank you. A Jocko drink. Well, he said something that was nuts. You said you always bring a bear shaft. And Everywhere. if you think something's messed up with your bow, you shoot a bear shaft at 20. Mm -hmm. Once you're done tuning and you're happy going through all the tune process, you know, whether you're doing some form of walk back, line tuning in the end, whatever. When you're done with everything, go back and shoot your bear shaft at 20 as a reference. That way you always know. And maybe that's all you do is you walk into camp and you shoot two arrows at 20, one fletched, one one bear shaft, and the bear shaft's where, you, where it should be. Generally for me, right helical, I'm gonna want the bear shaft. I, if the bow's perfect, somewhere around seven to 7.30, half to three quarters of an inch. Um, Let's see it, I'm excited. To, I mean, you yeah, gotta shoot your bear shaft now. I haven't even shot it, I don't even know. All right, and you're an index guy with the middle finger. Correct. Let's see that. This is an old Carter RX2. Um, they don't even make it anymore. I probably have the last four or five of them. What I prefer about it is the hook is on the outside. I've trained the last 15 years with some form of the Carter Evolution, That's which- like tension activated. Tension activated, just pull through, handheld. I now use a, a silverback because um, it, it fits my hand right, nicely and the hook opens on the outside. So impact point doesn't change a whole lot. <laughs> Um, you can see I keep it very short, so at full draw, it's very deep in my hand. I'm not out here on the tips of my fingers. Now, what I like about being on the middle finger is ergonomically, it's way better. You're not turning your hand to the outside. You're not applying torque here, trying to get your finger to the trigger. I Essentially, I'm shooting this like a handheld or like a, a, a tension style release. So guys, he just landed, just bought a couple turkey tags, and I make him like get on camera right when he walks in the door. Here's what we're gonna do. Let's go shoot, because you live at 5,000 feet. Yeah. You're down to 2,000 feet. Let's see how hot you are here. You're shooting the omen? Did you bring the omen? Yes, sir. If you outshoot me so bad, like the worst, he's gonna outshoot me, but the worst, the I've more- I've been flying all day and I haven't eaten, I doubt it. <laughs> the more you shoot better than me, the harder I'm gonna make the workout. That's gonna be the deal. Why aren't you using pro comps, poor mill guy? I really like the pro comps, but I think this is an overall better arrow. I've shot pro comps for four years. Oh, okay, you have history with them. Yeah. Tired of them broke a bunch of them. <laughs> I have I broke one vap, and that was a bear rolled over on it. So a broadhead, a fixed broadhead, isn't as good of a test as a bear shaft. No. Okay. No, because if you're running a, a forgiving broadhead, enough lane, it's still going to overcome that. It'll overcome that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Dang. I, so I'm going to do that. Like I'm going to travel with a bear shaft. Yeah. And you just electrical tape until it weighs the same. Exactly the same. Okay. Like electrical tape, duct tape, whatever you. Prefer. Some guys cut like a little bit of their vein off. Yeah. Or I, I, I just like tape because it's going to at least get it as close to the diameter of the shaft. This is the hide. And then the Jekyll is the fixed. Correct. And it's the same ferrule. Correct. You can go back and forth. Yeah, there's a Jekyll right here. What was this called before or is this always? Grave digger. Grave digger. And you guys bought the design or? No, so what? It, so Dale Perry is the owner of Evolution Outdoors. He was the creator of D Grave Digger. And uh, came to us in 2010 or 12. And there's more blood on that. <laughs> I've been shooting a lot of stuff lately. So. I haven't. I haven't killed nothing <laughs> since December. Yeah, and those sh will shoot in the same hole together. So you can't find Grave Digger anymore? They're still around, but they're they're junk now. It's, I mean, I'll be so honest. he sold it. Yeah, he sold it in 2015, 2016, something like that. And that manufacturing, went not to, to talk smack, but it's overseas. It went back to China. Okay. Yep. And then he had a three-year non-compete, came back to us. We made some changes, some improvements, and launched Evolution. It's not just that I make the product. I will. I won't shoot another head. Hmm. The performance. The last ten animals I've shot combined have gone less than 100 yards, and 60 of that was an axis. 
Yeah, and that get, and that's like confidence speaking, which is always cool. Like, don't trust people's opinions that don't have blood on their hands. Think about what I just said there. Everyone's got a YouTube channel. Everyone's yeah. got opinions. I only trust people who are vetted and have blood on their hands. What do you got on the here? What's, so these what? are the Valkyrie version. So Ooh, okay. if you've never if you've never seen Valkyrie, so we actually make um, we make the collars and the points. For the Brent? points for Brent. Oh, yeah. Because you're familiar with how they the thread system and Brent's patented thread system. There's a little O-ring in there too? Yep, O-rings all the way on the bottom. Oh my gosh. So this is a 180 grain version. So wait a second. Does this, how did you get this into your broadhead? I I made some for for fun and then I sent them to Dale and to Brent and said, hey, you two need to uh, figure it out. You, you need to, so these are, are available this, from guys? Valkyrie. I did not know that. Yeah. So I finally just got my hands on Valkyrie and I'm like really impressed. It's very, very impressive. This system is the best system for a four millimeter arrow that's ever been made. Is up here at the back of the ferrule. This allows your collar to come all the way down so you don't have all the 832 and everything sticking out the end of the shaft, yep. which makes it really weak. Everything's down inside. So the back of the shaft's like a quarter of an inch from the end of the collar. I got to get a close up of this from my friends here on YouTube. This is. You can tell a target guy and I went and forgot my quiver because it's all set up for redding. So I don't know if that's all in. Yeah view but you can see there's only about a quarter inch of thread there and then the back of the shafts all the way up here a leaves this right over yeah so a this keeps the strength improvement is exponential aligning your spine i don't worry about broad head alignment i don't mess with any of that Do you i've think never that's seen that's accurate i don't know how accurate it is but i've definitely noticed a massive improvement if they're all in the same spot um for me the best performance has been having it pointing down really yeah See, I'm not a good enough archer to know that kind of stuff, but I would be willing to try that. Yeah, I mean, I'm not great, but to sit out there and you have your good days and when you're shooting really good arrows and you start seeing your groups get smaller by making changes, you know? Yeah, so the spine alignment that I've tested on the Ram Tester, I'd say, don't quote me, like don't, don't hold me to the fire on this, but about seven to eight out of every 10 matches up. And then sometimes the stiffest part is a little over or a little over, but it's not far off. It's yeah. never like, completely opposite i and i think the biggest thing that would be bad is if it was off 90 degrees yeah it's not no it's yeah, not it and victory bought six ram spine testers from mm -hmm. the guy who made it yeah he was just here at my house two days ago showing me his invention that he invented 20 years ago i was impressed i will have to mess with it a little bit but okay last but not least what's up with this dude so I know I've sent you some bits knobs. Yes. The orange one is a four, five, six flip. Okay. I thought it was kind of gimmicky, I'll be honest. The, the guy said, hey, we wanna, you know, we've all messed with six fletch and we've yeah. all done that, but let's just do a four, five, six for fun. And I was, I've always been a three max stealth guy. And you'll see half my arrows are this and half are three max stealths. And- And I love max stealths, man. Oh yeah. I am too. So what happened though is I went, I started running some numbers. Now these are the max 23s. This is actually a, thinner max extrusion it's meant for the target world okay and anybody who shoots it loves it yeah five of these weigh three grains less than three max stealths what now you get a little increase in drag from okay. more leading edges sure but you get way less wind drift hmm. they shoot in the same hole to 120 yards until the wind blows and then this outperforms it Ugh, damn you dude you're messing up everything i thought and then you're to the right here yeah i'm a that's my bows all i run first string magnums and they all clock to the right yeah i thought clocking isn't important i think it's extremely important did you hear that it's if just you've nice ever watched it in high speed video yeah. uh, that an arrow for the first 10 to 12 15 yards depending on how the setup that arrow's won't go in the wrong way then it knuckles and has to turn the other way so what's your foc running five veins in the back uh 17.2 percent so you got 180 200 plus 20 yeah. 200 up front and you're still over 16 percent you're at 17. 17 and you're running five veins mm -hmm. and you got what's well, pretty good offset yep two degrees wow we're going to do for strength we're going to be like we'll call this like a strength and a power a pc which is just get the bar from the ground to your shoulder and then we're going to squat it we'll do a double squat so we'll go plus two fs front squat power clean it up front squat it front squat it and then we'll call shoulder to overhead i'm just going to call it a pj which is a push jerk we're just going to get the bar overhead and we'll finish with the hang squat clean watch him make it break it break it break it lunges 
We'll go reverse hyper. It just takes your spine, spaces it out, hamstrings, butt, lower back. So love that. And then we'll do the GHD raises. to do what you thought you were going to do okay we are going to run 400 meters and i don't like running by the way and then we're going to do a 500 meter row and then whatever remaining times left in that six minute window you're going to do max front squats and we're going to do them light like it'd be like 95. so it's just going to be cardio with a barbell My first round, I got like 25, I was a beast. And then that second round, we got two minutes rest. We did the exact same thing, 450 meter run, 500 meter row. You got to do some front squats on that round. Um, how many front squats did you get? Just five. And did they feel ridiculous? Yeah. Yeah, just to breathe. Just breathing the, what's your new machine over there? The reverse hyper. The reverse hyper, yeah, that got my hamstrings. Awesome. Smoked, so everything after that was, Effort. It is a way for me to get as much work in done in a short amount of time. And you're never gonna see me on an elliptical machine just like, or walking slow. I'll save that for rucks, but I like doing a little blur between strength and cardio for conditioning. Yeah, oh yeah. For me, that was killer. Cool. Absolutely. That last part that we just did, yeah. I always have a conditioning piece. I feel like it's lend itself to having kind of limitless fitness in the mountains. Oh yeah. That little bursty speed, you might need to cut off a bull. And uh, anyways, these guys don't watch the channel about my fitness. Guys, we're gonna go make this dude some elk steaks and then uh, we're gonna eat a meal and we're gonna podcast. It's gonna be awesome. I'm gonna take advantage of every second of your time, man. It's gonna be That's why we're here, man. Cool. All right, That's we'll see you after here. dinner, guys. Take care.